Hey everyone, John from Ride Upstate with this week's GigTube Weekly. Let me have a cup of coffee first. Sip. That's good stuff. All right, so our first little bit of news here comes. Well, if I can get my dumb thing to work here, which it's not. There we go. First little bit of news here comes, it's about the strike that Uber and Lyft drivers did earlier this week. It was on Wednesday. It was a 24-hour strike in 11 different cities. They're asking for better pay, the right to unionize, and legislation to protect their classification. You've also probably heard about the DoorDash Day of Rest that Valdestat's voice proposed and started. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about whether or not it will work. I think you all are kind of missing the point when you say, I don't think it will work. The point of the strike is to do this, is to get press coverage about it, is for the people, for news outlets, and for the customers to take notice because until you can put pressure on DoorDash through the news and through the customers, nothing's going to change. It, right? And, and many of you have said that there's always drivers out there who will take the cheaper rides. And I think that's true. But this is the point is to get something like this in the news. This is cbsnews.com, so major national outlet. They do say that it's unclear how many people participated. And, of course, we're seeing, we're seeing reports about how many participated, but the difficulty with an act like this, and, and listen, I... I am normally not a let's do an organized thing and try and change. I've always been the kind of person of if you don't like what you're getting, try something else. Try different pay. Try a different tactic. But I think we need to get visibility about what's going on with DoorDash and how they continue to lower pay to the drivers and continue to raise fees. You may have also seen, and I don't have this article here today, but DoorDash is trying to get fees capped in San Francisco because the city is charging them fees. And so what does that mean? They're losing money when they deliver food. The city wants to charge more fees so that the, right, the drivers get paid more. And DoorDash and Grubhub don't want that. The next thing here is, this is a video that came out from Pedro DoorDash Santiago. This past week, it was the 22nd, so just two days ago, and he got a message from someone that had a screenshot that guaranteed pay of $10 an hour at a Chipotle. Now, I know one of my viewers, William Anderson, is going to check this out and see what the deal is if he gets paid. But here's the deal. DoorDash guaranteeing $10 an hour <laughs> uh, plus tips, plus 100% of the tips. I mean, that's great if you get a $10 tip, but if you only do that one order in an hour because you're waiting for the hour the the order to be filled by Chipotle or you've got to drive half an hour to drop off the food $10 an hour it's just not a good guarantee I just I don't see where DoorDash is going to entice drivers to work for $10 an hour. 
Now, I understand. I mean, minimum wage here in New York for working at McDonald's is 15. Who's going to work for $10 an hour? I mean, come on. Let's 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 be real here. I just don't understand what this whole deal is with what what DoorDash is trying to do. I think they're desperate. I think in states where the minimum wage is much lower, that might entice some people. But I mean, after gas and other expenses, you're not making ten dollars an hour. We all know that, and it, it we just it's it's just not something that I think is going to work. I there'll be a link in the description below. Make sure you check out this video and see what DoorDash is trying to do here. Speaking of DoorDash, folks, there are scams out there. Here's an article about a DoorDash driver that was scammed for a thousand dollars. It says by sneaky company call. It sneaky company call. That's just a terrible. It makes it sound like DoorDash is the one that scanned them out of it. Basically, what happened was this guy was delivering. He got a call from someone pretending to be DoorDash when it was actually someone who was trying to hack into his account. And what they did was they logged into his account and they kind of pretended and said, oh, you're going to get a code on your phone. Give us the code. They got into his account because he gave the authorization code out to this person on the call and basically they drained his account they, they they transferred money from doordash into the scammer's checking account and so the, here's the other thing when you when you go through this whole thing here what you're going to find out is that this guy called doordash and doordash was like well, we can't do anything about it so until this guy got a hold of a news agency and the news agency called and said, hey, what's going on here? Uh, you know, and DoorDash was like, oh, uh, uh, we better help this guy. They were just going to let this dude lose his $1,000 because he was scammed out of it. I mean, the, nothing was happening until this lady from this news agency called DoorDash. And when you watch the, the video here of it, you'll see that he says, you know, oh, thanks for calling. I'm glad you I'm glad you guys helped me out with that. Look, not every not every person out there who's who's falling and succumbing to this scam is going to have a news agency that will call DoorDash and help them. Listen, people, if someone calls you and says they are from DoorDash support, just hang up the phone. DoorDash support does not call you. DoorDash corporate does not call you. Never, ever do that. And never give out your code to someone over the phone. Someone over the phone asks you for a code that you received on your device. Don't ever give it out. Just, just be careful, folks. Be careful. All right, so next year, Lyft is going to be offering driverless rides in Austin, Texas. So this is very interesting. Argo AI, I, 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 think, I think Argo AI is the company that Uber sold off their self-driving technology to. I'm not 100% sure on that, but maybe, maybe. But Lyft is partnering with Ford and Argo AI in order to provide driverless cars. This is the plan, folks. If you're in rideshare, this is the plan. For those short trips around town, like from the ho from a hotel to uh, a sports venue or from a, um, the train station to an apartment or downtown or something like that, this is the plan. Those short little two and three mile rides they want to be able to automate all of this they want to be able to have this automated system and have us driving the long mile drives the, the, the long distance drives so right now it says they're testing fleets in detroit miami palo alto california pittsburgh and washington 
says this is going to roll out in Miami this year. So that will be interesting to see. And I mean, it looks like it's got this kind of hump on top of it and thing in the back and extra stuff on the front bumper here. I mean, it looks like a nice vehicle, right? It looks like they're using one of these, um, what is that? Uh, I don't know what type of vehicle that is. Can't really tell. But um, they're using cameras. They're using radar. They're using a lot of different tools to implement this. This is the plan, folks, to replace us. It'll be interesting to see, again, how many people this thing crashes into before they take it off the road because people are unpredictable. People are unpredictable. So it doesn't say here whether or not there are going to be safety drivers in the vehicles. I don't think so. That would kind of make it non-autonomous. Um, pretty interesting, I think, but it's not going to be long before people end up uh, <laughs> getting hit. You know, bicycle pulls out in front of them, kid walks into the street. Uh, downtown Austin is a dangerous place, so I mean, maybe it's not going to be downtown. Uber will now show California drivers full fares, including fees. So you may recall hearing last week that there was this big uh, dust up about the fact that Uber was not showing every fee that they were charging customers. Right, there's this mandatory fee that they have to apply because in order to make up, make that hourly rate for Prop 22. So, and of course, you know, Uber, you know, we're constantly seeking feedback from drivers and riders. As a result, we have changed our policy and drivers will now see the driver benefits and marketplace fees, which were previously only shown to riders. Uber said the changes were in the works before the report. So this only applies to California. We still don't see full fees here in New York. Uh, I know that for a fact. Um, yeah, we don't we don't see. And here, Washington Post is reporting that the benefits we're not seeing the benefits of price increases. You can go online right now and find a social media post where someone says, "Hey, look, this is how much my writer was charged, and this is how much." I'm going to get paid for this and there's no surge and there's no, you know, it, it's just, listen, and this is, this is just a fact in order for us to get paid more, the customer has to be charged more. There's just no way neighbor's dog out there is making a ton of noise. There's just no way for Uber to keep Uber and Lyft to keep their rates where they are and pay us more. They're, they're losing money. Lyft is losing money. Um, all these companies are losing money. The problem is, is that they've kind of built their model off of pri providing super inexpensive transportation. A lot of people don't think of it this way, but, you know, having a personal driver <laughs> is a luxury. People who used to take the bus to work take Uber to work now, and they pay way more because because it compresses the amount of time that it takes, you know, instead of an hour bus ride, they might have a 20 minute ride in a car. And so they're willing to pay the difference of that in order to not get up earlier in the morning and not have to wait around on a bus and when change buses or whatever the case may be, this is a luxury and Uber and Lyft, instead of charging luxury prices, want to charge the lowest they want as many customers as possible and so they they've artificially kept rates down for riders where i think if they had not suppressed costs so much and if you take uber regularly you're probably watching this and you're saying what are you talking about it's it's expensive it's supposed to be right uh you're asking for someone to come and pick you up and take you somewhere instead of uh, sharing the cost with 50 other people on a bus to for that bus to go 10 miles down the road. You're asking an individual, so you're, you're paying the, the cost of 
an individual private ride somewhere instead of a public transportation type situation. The only way we get paid more is if the customer pays more. Now, what I don't like is how, how much the rates have gone up for customers, and we're not seeing any of that. Our mileage pay is not going up, even though gas prices are going. This is just ridiculous. And I saw something from Harry, uh, the rideshare guy, on Twitter the other day about him saying that Uber made a statement that, oh, it's, it's like difficult to do, it's programming. And I said, just apply a dollar surge across the whole country. Just apply a dollar surge. That's all you need to do. If gas prices have gone up a dollar or whatever, just make it a nationwide surge. That's all you got to do. It, it can't be that difficult programmatically to do that. All right, final news item here is from Grubhub. Um, Grubhub is advertising with the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Now, why are you talking about what, where Grubhub is advertising? Be prepared if you're on Grubhub. Um, I know that a lot of you talk about how payouts are really good on Grubhub. Those payouts are going to stop dropping, start dropping, because they're going to get more and more customers on the platform, and they are going to realize we got to bring in more drivers. That costs them money to bring in more drivers, and, and therefore the payouts are going to drop. So watch in three to six months, watch the payout start, start dropping on Grubhub, um, especially with this, they're going to be spotlighting their Grubhub guarantee, right? Where if it, if they don't have the lowest price, right? If they don't have the low, remember I talked about this low price, they want to get people in at a low price. If they don't have the lowest price and it's not on time, they're going to start giving the customers perks which basically means they're losing money and they're losing more money, I should say. And they're, they're going to drive the prices down. And when they drive the prices down, you get paid less. So be aware of this. Keep an eye out on that. And um, that is going to do it for this week. Again, no rideshare driver of the week, no gig gig to gig worker of the week. I want to have another one. Um, when I did William, it was kind of like a, uh, a an experiment. So I think I'm just going to drop that portion since I'm not getting any responses. I probably don't have a big enough audience in order to get people to respond. There aren't enough people watching this video for me to have a gig worker of the week. Maybe on down the road, I I will do that later. But what are your thoughts on all of these articles? What are your thoughts on Grubhub doing all this advertising, trying to get more customers in, guaranteeing the lowest price? Your payouts are going to drop. I've seen some videos of people who are on Grubhub. I, I can't get on Grubhub. And they're making, you know, $11 to drive three or four miles. They're making $20 to drive uh, five miles. Those are good payouts. But... Those are going to go away, I think, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on seeing all the fees that Uber charges a customer? Is that information that, that we should know as an independent contractor? What fees are being charged to the customer? What portion of the take am I getting? Now, Uber defines the take differently than we define, right? The driver defines the take as the total amount that the rider pays, Uber doesn't think of it that way. Uber thinks of the take as what they're actually charging the rider for mileage and time. That's the portion. When they say the driver is getting a certain percentage of the take, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about all the fees that are added onto it. They're talking about the actual mileage and time that they charge the customer. That's the part of the take they're talking about. Do you think we should get more of those fees, a portion of those fees? Do you think um, we should get 
the full amount that they charge the customer for mileage and minutes. And then Uber can just do whatever fees. Look, if I got paid a dollar a mile and say 25 cents a minute for every ride that I did, I don't care what fees Uber charges, right? Because I'm on the highway, I'm making a dollar twenty-five a, 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 a mile at sixty miles per hour. I mean, that's not the greatest, but it's better than sixty-seven cents a mile and whatever it is, like eighteen cents a minute. So, just some thoughts for you. My name is John from Ride Upstate. This has been GigTube Weekly. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.